This is the greatest turnout. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And hi, Facebook friends. We're doing this on Facebook Live. So, well, we're gonna, I'm Dr. Lisa Gordon. You all know me. I have not seen some of you in so very long. There are three people here that, who I haven't seen in years. And I'm so delighted to have you all here. Thank you for coming. So uh, tonight we're going to be talking about digestion and how it can get better naturally. So what I want to do first of all is tell you a little bit about my story and then I'm going to ask you, so start thinking, do you have any pressing questions about digestion? And we'll go over those things first and then we'll get into the talk and maybe everything will be answered by the time you ask your questions and that'll, that'll give you the idea about what, what we were going to talk about, but I do have a lot of things that I really need to address. So some of the things that you ask, I might put off until the middle of my talk, or some of them I might answer right away. And then I'm also going to review what some of you already know a little bit about, about how I help to handle digestive problems naturally instead of with medication. So, of course, you're here at the Natural Health Improvement Center of Columbia, Maryland, which is the name of my practice. And the, name, the reason it's called that is because we help people get well and stay well without drugs or surgery. Natural Health Improvement Center. So, a little bit about myself. Some of you know some of this, and some of you are, know me but don't know my whole story. So, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how I got here and my experience with natural health. Um, I, would, I was a little kid who decided that I wanted to learn how human bodies work, and so I've spent past 50 something years figuring out how human bodies work, and since all of our bodies are imperfect and go through experiences, my experiences have been things like being exposed to chemicals and all kinds of things. I remember when I was a little kid, I would find the, the uh, trucks that were spraying for mosquitoes. And the most fun thing would be to run through that smoke. <laughs> well, we didn't know back then, you know, we didn't know what we know now. And so later in life, what I found out was that I had a thyroid problem. And so I got the lab test done and my thyroid showed up as being weak and Hypo, so low thyroid, and the answer for that in the medical field is, of course, to fix that with some thyroid medication. So as a chiropractor, it took me about a year to figure out that I was going to go on the thyroid medication because I didn't want to be on any medication at all, and this was 27 years ago, <laughs> and so, or more, and um, about 27 years ago, I went on thyroid medication, and my thyroid medication kept needing to go up and up and up, and the medical doctors were well-intended, of course, they, what they knew was that a thyroid can never get better. Once it gets, starts going bad, it can't get better. And it never really made total sense to me, but I didn't know any better. So what was prescribed to me was the synthetic version of thyroid medication. Well, as I went along, I learned that for me, the natural thyroid medication worked better, and so I took that, and then I switched more recently to a different one of those. And But nonetheless, my thyroid need, the medication need kept going up. In other words, my lab tests kept showing that my thyroid was getting worse. Well, all along, I was taking thyroid supplements. So I, have, I have access to the best supplements. You know, I've got, I know what I'm taking, and I thought that it would make sense that if I gave my thyroid the food that it needed to get better, that it should get better. Well, it never really got better. Everything kept, the need kept going up and up and up over the years. And I ended up on a lot of thyroid medication. I felt okay because the thyroid medication was working for my symptom. But then more recently what happened was about four years ago, I got introduced to nutrition response testing. And I knew that that's the thing I've been looking for for my whole 31 years in, in chiropractic practice. And the reason for that was because my chiropractic patients were having trouble holding their adjustments, getting better, et cetera, and they were kind of just staying at this level of dysfunction. They would come in and they would love getting their adjustment and then they would go home and they would 
wait till they got bad enough to need their next adjustment, and it just kept going on and on like that. So I consider that a level of dysfunction because they never really got better enough to not really need me anymore, which was my goal. I wanted them to come four times a year or once a month or whatever on a maintenance basis, but really feel well. Like they went to the dentist without any cavities and they got their teeth cleaned. That kind of thing. That's what I really wanted. I, want a pra I wanted a practice full of people who really just loved coming to see me and understood the value of chiropractic and keeping them well, but they didn't have any pain and they didn't have any problems. That was my dream practice. But people weren't getting there. So I was disappointed and eventually I found nutrition response testing, which made me understand that a lot of times there's an underlying problem to people's pain. So is it a thyroid? My pain was in my neck. And until I got on nutrition response testing, my neck pain didn't even ever get, ever get better. I could get adjusted, I had these horrible headaches. Uh, that's why I know so many techniques in chiropractic because I was trying to get rid of my headaches and my neck pain. So I'm professionally, now I'm a really good chiropractor, I know a whole bunch of stuff. But it wasn't until I got to nutrition response testing that my actual headaches went away. And now as a result of my helping my body get better, I don't get the horrible headaches I used to get when I could have been a weather reporter. You know, I knew when there was a storm in Ohio. Now I don't have those headaches at all. And because of nutrition response testing, I found out that even though I was taking all those thyroid supplements, it was actually not my thyroid that needed the attention first. It was my adrenal glands that needed the attention first. And so in the beginning of my nutrition response testing program, I had to take one, one pill three times a day, one type of supplement three times a day. And some of those of you who are on nutrition response testing programs know that you're taking more than one pill, right? Some of you are taking a bunch and I'm taking a bunch now. And the reason is that my adrenal glands needed to be supported before my thyroid even understood what was going on. It was like I was trying to do, do multiplication before I learned addition. So once I did handle the thing that needed to be handled first, which was my adrenal glands, then my thyroid really started speaking up. And then I found out that uh, mosquito spray had affected me. All that I had been exposed to metals, I had scars on my body, I had foods and immune challenges that needed to be handled. So the body is in layers, and my body now is able to have one half the amount of thyroid medication that I was able to have before. So I'm, I'm going on 62 years old, and no medical doctor would have ever told me that my thyroid medication could go down, that my thyroid could possibly get better. My knowledge and my philosophy is that if the body replicates cells, if the body makes more cells, why can't it make cells from the good cells rather than just from the bad cells? So I knew this within myself, but I didn't know how to access that information. Now I'm taking half the, half the thyroid medication that I was on recently, and I feel really good, and I feel better, in fact, than I felt then. So I've also gone through some digestive things. I've had bloating, and I've had some of the things that maybe some of you have had. I've had acid reflux, and so I know from my body's experience about which I talk tonight and how I can help other people. So I'm very grateful for, for uh, Dr. Fred Eulen, who is the person that you were just watching on the video, for those of you who were here. That's the founder of Nutrition Response Testing, and that's what Nutrition Response Testing looks like when, people, when the founder is doing it. So I wanted you guys to see some of that. And um, I would like to go ahead and ask you, are there any pressing questions regarding digestion? Anything that you were really hoping to get tonight about any particular symptom, or you could just call out the symptom, or you could ask a question. So I'm gonna take a couple of minutes now. Yes. Um, I have, I've just been diagnosed with low acid. Very good, plus. okay, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to talk about low, Every talks about everybody talks about high, but not that low. Low stomach acid. Good. We're going to be talking about that. Very good. And anything else in particular? Just call them out. 
Yes, H. pylori. H. pylori, okay. Bloating. Bloating. Anything else in particular that drew you here tonight? Constipation. Okay, constipation. Okay, anything else? A burping with reflux. Okay. <clears throat> Does the coughing come from low acid reflux? It can, for the coughing. Yeah. You can sometimes have constipation. Once you fix that, then you end up with diarrhea. <laughs> so you go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. Okay, well, that kind of covers my talk tonight. <laughs> Anything else in particular that you'd like to have me cover this evening? Okay, very good. So, the, the main thing here is that our bodies need to digest their food. Okay, so we need to be able to eat good food. Let's assume we're eating good food. Can we hand out the... Not yet. Yeah, okay. No. Um, we're, let's assume that we're eating good food. And our bodies have everything in alignment to make our cells be able to accept that, the nutrients from that food so our bodies can break down the food and it can, they can absorb the food in the various parts of our digestive tract that where they need to digest and absorb the food. And then those nutrients can go into our cells and make good cells and make the good cells replicate. Do you know the word replicate? Do you know, does everybody know what that word means? Anybody not know? Replicate means make more of those cells. So we have cells and what happens is they make more cells. So they make cells from themselves, like baby cells. They make baby cells, okay? So we wanna have baby cells that are healthy instead of baby cells that are not healthy. So if we have good food and our digestive systems work properly, then baby cells, then cells should make good cells. Okay, is that clear that up? Yes. All right, now what are the things that can go wrong? First thing that happens is when we eat food, we put it in our mouth, we're, let's assume we're eating good food. We're eating fruits, we're eating vegetables, lots of vegetables, we're eating good nutritious food, we're eating meats that don't have hormones and, or antibiotics in them, we're having dairy that doesn't have hormones and antibiotics, we're having eggs likewise that are good solid proteins and minerals and vitamins that are coming from natural foods. Okay, let's assume that. That food goes into our mouth. The first thing we do is we chew up our food and it mixes with our saliva and then that goes down through our esophagus into our stomachs and in the stomach some magic happens. So in the stomach, we have acid. It is very important to have a very acidic stomach. So isn't it true that sometimes people get what's called acid reflux? And that's what this question means, burping with reflux. So how does that happen? If our food goes into our stomach and there's plenty of acid in there, only then can that food be broken down and allowed to go into the small intestine. So there are valves at the top and the bottom of the stomach. This is the esophagus. There's a stomach and there's the small intestine. There's a valve here and there's a valve here. This is the person's head, that's the person who goes into the large intestine, blah, 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 that's on the intestine. Well, then it goes out, doesn't it? So this is where the food comes in, it goes into the stomach. The, the stomach is supposed to be very acidic. Can you see? Yeah. You have x-ray vision. <laughs> okay, so the, the stomach is very acidic, and the stomach has to break down all the food. Well, this is a little valve here that opens when the food goes in there. So the food, it, it knows it's coming. It opens, food goes down, it shuts. But sometimes it doesn't shut. 
Well, that could happen for a couple of reasons. One is that you could have what's called a hiatal hernia, meaning that there's a structural reason why that doesn't shut properly. That is something that I know how to handle with chiropractic techniques. It's pretty easy to do. And sometimes I can even teach it to my patients so that if in case they get that horrible, horrible pain that happens with acid reflux, which can be horrible pain. People think they're having a heart attack. Many people go to the hospital thinking that they are having a heart attack. They do all the tests, there's nothing. It's acid reflux, which can cause horrible pain. It can cause, yes, coughing. It can cause coughing, it can cause sore throats. That it's acid coming up, back up into the esophagus. It can cause damage to the esophagus if it goes on for a very long time. So structurally, meaning keeping that down physically is very important. It's very You have that? Yeah, yeah. Some my strain will have this problem. So oh. I when you eat something. Oh, and it can even cause vomiting. Yes, right, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, right. So sometimes what happens is that this valve here doesn't open properly because the stomach doesn't have enough acid in it. This valve opens the one at the bottom that allows the food to go out of the stomach. That opens when there's a specific level of acidity in the stomach. Now you can imagine that I'm leading up to something here about acid. And what I'm leading up to is the difference between the, the way that most people in our culture understand acid reflux, the solution to acid reflux is thought to be, mistakenly thought to be, reduce the acid in the stomach. That's not true. Because what happens when you reduce the acid in the stomach? This valve doesn't open. The person never gets the food down into the, the, the small intestine as easily as he or she should. So there's this feeling of pressure, there's this feeling in the stomach of bloating right here in the stomach. And that food is not broken down. So what happens to the nutrients in it? The person never gets the nutrients. So if, if this person is given an antacid, which is probably one of the most prescribed types of drugs of one sort or another, they have various mechanisms of things they prescribe, and people stay on them forever. They're supposed to be maybe a maximum of six months. But I have patients who've been on them for 12 years. And their doctors never take them off. And what ends up happening? If the food that comes in through the mouth, down to the, through the esophagus, into the stomach, has a lower, doesn't have enough acid to break down, those nutrients never get a, become available to the body the person becomes malnourished. That person is not getting nutrition. So even if they're eating a pretty good diet, if these things are going on, they're not getting all those good nutrients. So it's a very, very important and severe problem in our culture. So what else can happen if we have too low acid? And this is what you were asking. You're saying you, have, you might have low acid. And you were also asking, I think, about how you hear often that people have too much acid. You may be saying, asking the question about acid reflux, thinking that that means they have too much acid. They don't have too much acid. It's just that that acid is coming back up here. That's the problem. And in fact, if there's too little acid in a person's stomach, Food will sit in the person's stomach and rot. And then that creates acid that's not the natural acid of the body. And then that can go back up. So how do we lose acid in our stomach? 
we lose it as we age. We lose it because we've eaten too much sugar. We've eat, we lose it because we've eaten uh, food that isn't good for us. And unfortunately, in our society, in the United States of America, we should have the best food available to us, but we do not. We no longer have easily available to us natural food. We have to search out at the health food stores, at the farmer's market. It's very difficult to go to your local store and get organic food, get meat that hasn't been tainted by the processing of meat, by the growing of meat, by the way they treat the animals in this country. The hormones are injected so that they get fatter quicker, so that they get, um, they get uh, antibiotics, so that they don't get bacterial infections as a result of the close quarters in which they are grown. They're treated poorly, I mean really poorly, and so all of these things go into affecting what should be nutritious food for us. There's a lot of talk about gluten in our world and how people are, glute, are sensitive to gluten. Well, that's true for some people. As the food goes down, it goes into the intestines and there are little hairs in the intestines that sometimes are, have been damaged to the extent that somebody has celiac disease, a disease called celiac disease, which means that they really can't have gluten. For the rest of us, however, which is by far most of us, it's really not the gluten that's the problem, but rather it's been found that the reason we can't eat wheat easily is because of the Roundup that's used, the pesticide called, or the herbicide and the pesticide that's called glyphosate. And so we are being poisoned by our food. <laughs> GMOs, are created in part at least to allow the wheat to have to be ground up ready they call it round up ready and they're spraying do you does everybody know what roundup is anybody not know roundup is the 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 chemicals they use on the crops so and you people use it all over their yards to get rid of weeds and stuff but they use it to such a degree on the crops like wheat in particular that we are now getting 40 times that chemical as we did just 20 years ago. That's the reason why people can't have gluten. If you go to Europe, if you go to Italy or you go to France or you go to some Latin American countries, that stuff is not allowed. GMOs aren't allowed, it's illegal. And the use of those chemicals is not allowed. And even if you cannot eat the wheat in the United States, you will be able to eat it there unless you have, unless you have an allergy to it, a real allergy to the wheat or the gluten, or you have celiac disease. It's very interesting. Okay, so that can cause if you're eating a lot of pesticide, that can cause damage to the digestive tract. So when you have no, low acid, now do you understand now about low acid? That that's a problem more than high acid there's no there's very rarely too much acid in a person's stomach because you're born the way you're supposed to be right you're born to have the right amount of acid in the right amount of places in your body some of our places are supposed to be acidic and some of our places are supposed to be more alkaline and the stomach is one of those places that's supposed to be acidic so that we can break down our food and digest it and use it and make good cells you know, everybody with me? Okay, good. So now we've got low acid handled. Well, we've also talked about bloating because if you aren't, if you don't have enough acid in your stomach, you're going to get bloated. Your food's not going to go down, and then if it doesn't get digested, even if it does go down, you might, um, your body might create gas, and so that. That causes the bloating. We've covered the burping with reflux. The burping um, is just another one of the symptoms of the reflux. As I've said, you could be burping, so you've got you've got bloating, so you've got gas now in your stomach, 
you've got, so you burp it up. And because this valve is not closing properly or it's opening randomly, it's, um, you're having a reflux. And then coughing also has to do oftentimes with the acid coming back up. And so it makes you cough or it gives you a sore throat or both. And then sometimes it can even cause sleep apnea. There are lots of things that can be caused. This is a very, very serious problem. Now, constipation and diarrhea can be caused also by the body not being able to digest its food. And there are other reasons that that can occur. You could have a, um, an overgrowth or an imbalance in your gut, gut being the small intestine and the large intestine. You could have an imbalance of good and bad bacteria. So you might have a, something that's called candidiasis, or you might have some uh, yeast overgrowth or some version of that. Sometimes babies are born and they have thrush, they have white on their tongue. That's a version of this kind of imbalance. Women occasionally will get vaginal infections from this same sort of thing. It can happen in the gut as well. So yeast infections, that's not just in the vaginal area, it's not just in the mouth and babies, but rather it's also through, it can be through the body. So that can cause constipation, it can cause diarrhea, it can cause bloating, it can cause all, lots of different things like that, okay? And there are ways that we can handle those things. H. pylori is a, is a more complicated thing. That is a bacteria that can uh, fool the stomach. So it, this is something that often causes ulcers in the stomach. So most people don't have that. Most people don't have ulcers. So what some people do say, uh, much food is uh, painful. And I'm going to take Coca-Cola. Uh-huh. People say that. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting story because Coca-Cola, the, the active ingredient in Coca-Cola used to be. As made before. Yeah, it used, it used to be a, a medicine. So it was used for that sort of thing. I don't think that the Coca-Cola these days is, I mean, you've got high fructose corn syrup in there yeah, and all yeah, kinds of junk. Yeah. So, I don't know. Do you know anything about that? Or I think so, ginger ale is kind of a nice thing. Yeah, it's it's because it's ginger. Coca-Cola yeah. has the caffeine yeah. and yeah. yeah. Sometimes when I, 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 I drink some ginger water, can they do ginger? Ginger, yeah, yep, yeah. yep, ginger ale. Yeah, yeah that's it. That, that might be a better a better solution. However, if you find yourself needing to use those sorts of things often, then, you know, it, it's not just because you went out for a huge Mexican meal or something like that. You know, like if you eat a bunch of tacos and a bunch of food that's not good for you or, or you know, too much spaghetti or whatever it is, you know, whatever you ate too much of, that's an isolated incident. But if it happens repeatedly, then yeah, you need a natural health care provider to help you find out what's going on with you to really heal it, yeah. to heal the problem. Okay, so H. pylori, that's a whole kind of other yeah. subject. It does crazy things with the acids and it hides from acid and it does all kinds of crazy things. So what I would like to do now is to show you about how, hold on a second, excuse me, I'm gonna go behind here for a second. I want to show you how we can help with finding out what's going on. Um, some of you already really know what I do with nutrition response testing, and some of you are brand new here. So what I'm going to do is explain to you about how we find out with nutrition response testing because nutrition response testing is the greatest thing since sliced bread in terms of <laughs> without the glyphosate. Without the glyphosate, <laughs> since <laughs> natural sliced bread. Okay, the greatest thing since toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things that I actually didn't go into yet that I really want to emphasize is the importance of keeping free of sugar in the body. Because sugar is 
one of the most dangerous things that we eat. And the reason for that is because once we put sugar in our mouth, everything starts inflaming. Our joints start inflaming. Our digestive systems start inflaming. Our brains start inflaming. Our immune system goes down for six hours after we eat sugar. So if you are wondering about flu season, isn't it interesting that flu season and our, uh, our, our sugar season in our culture happen at the same time? So we've got everybody having, thanks, um, having Halloween, and oh, we have to have candy for Halloween, and, and uh, Thanksgiving, we have to have pie and mashed potatoes for we have to. It's absolutely required. Christmas, New Year's, everybody's drinking and eating a bunch of sugar, right? Well, isn't that the time when a lot of people get sick? It's kind of interesting. So the answer to should I get a flu shot or should I stop eating sugar? Kind of no-brainer. <laughs> really. Okay. So the question is, if somebody should come in, and I have acid reflux, what should I do? I'm doing what my doctor said. I'm taking all my medicines and it isn't helping. Okay, well, first of all, you're probably taking acid blockers. So I, I as a chiropractor, cannot tell you to not take any medication because I don't have a license to prescribe medication and therefore I cannot tell somebody to go off their medication. What my patients do, however, is if they start noticing themselves getting better, I send them back to their medical doctor and they tell their medical doctor, listen, I'm getting better, I'm working with this doctor, Dr. Lisa, and she's doing nutrition response testing with me, I'm eating better, I'm feeling better, can I diminish my medication? And hopefully that medical doctor will be open and very happy to reduce the medication, and then we kind of work together with the patient that way. So I'm very interested in people's bodies working well. So what we do here is called nutrition response testing, and I am going to show you a triangle here. So let's say your symptom is acid reflux. I'm just picking one out of all those symptoms, okay? It could be constipation, it could be bloating, it could be all the things associated with all those, okay? Down here we've got organs. And here we've got nutrition. If we have a symptom, are the organs working properly if there's a symptom? No. Probably not. So we're going to put organ dysfunction here. If the organs aren't functioning properly, are we going to be able to use our nutrition? Not really. So nutritional deficiency. What would happen if we found out what nutrition we were missing? Do you think the organs would be functioning better? Mm -hmm. And do you think you might have less symptoms? What would happen if the organ worked better? Would we be able, the organs in the body worked better? Do you think we'd be able to utilize our food better and get the nutrition? Yeah. And what would happen to the symptoms? Would they get better or worse? They get better, exactly, exactly. So those of you who have been here in my practice, many of you have experienced this happening, right? And it's kind of magical because what we do is we find out which organs are not functioning properly, exactly what nutrition they need, and whatever the symptom is magically gets better once our wonderful bodies that are pretty perfect get what they need instead of having not what we need and symptom suppression by way of medication or nothing, just continuing to suffer. I mean, most people who have, have acid reflux are actually going to do something. They'll get a Tums. They'll, at least they'll get something over the counter. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that they can grab a piece of ginger or peppermint 
And we have a packet of things we're going to hand out to you in a little while so that we can you can take all of this information home. You don't have to take take notes. We've got all of this on, on sheets that you can have. And um, so how do we do this? We find out by muscle testing exactly what's going on with a person. What we do is safe, it's natural, and it works. So who would like to be a demonstration? Kathy, come here. <laughs> I have an issue today. <laughs> you do have an issue today? I do. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Come stand here for me. And I'm just going to use you as a demonstration. I'm not actually doing a treatment here for you today. I'm just using you as a demonstration. Okay. So put your arm up just like that and match my pressure. Okay. Can everybody see that? Here. Put this one up and match my pressure. Okay. So that's a good strong arm, right? I can't push it down. All right, so um, I'm gonna check digestive. Okay, so I'm not even gonna ask her. I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna touch her stomach. Push here. Well, Kathy's having something going on with her stomach. I don't know whether she's got an exact uh, an exact symptom with her stomach, but she's got a weakness here, and I actually feel a little bit of bloating there. Mm -hmm. So what would I like to do? I'd like to find out about other parts of her body. Let's see about her thyroid. Push here. That doesn't give me a weakness there. Let's see about her brain. Push. Nope, that seems okay. Let's see about her liver. Push. That seems okay. So the stomach is the thing that's causing the problem there. So what I have here is some supplements. And what I need to do is find out which one of these is or ones is going to cause her to get better. And there are steps in between, there are other steps. I'm just giving you a demonstration of how this works. For those of you, there are a few of you who have never seen this before. So I've got a few things here. So let me just have you hold this one. Let's see if that changes. And I need to get to your stomach there. So if you put your hand down a little bit, like that, right there. And I'm touching her stomach where it was weak before. Let's see. No, that's not going to change it at all. Let's see about this one. Push your arm up. No, that's not the right one. And I'm just, I mean, I would have given her one of those if I was just, if I was just thinking about it, I would have given her one of those. Push. That one helps. Can you guys see this? Can you see how much yeah. stronger this is? Push. I saw on TV. Right? Yeah, I just said you. Yeah. I saw on TV. Yeah, exactly. That's that was the founder of this uh -huh, of this, sure. and, and he was showing it. So there's one, but there are actually three and three or four that I could have guessed among for her, but that's the one that her body needs. So what is that one? I'm curious. That one is uh, um, what I. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay. We'll talk about that at your next appointment. <laughs> okay. So what I tested on her was. Um, betaine hydrochloride and by itself that didn't do the trick but the supplement that has a little bit of betaine hydrochloride which is the acid so that's the kind of acid that the stomach likes plus pancreatic enzymes helped her so if I didn't have this tool I would have said oh you need more acid in your stomach let's try this one Maybe it would have helped a little bit, but she needs a little bit more. I also tested something that we often use for bladder, which I knew I didn't know wasn't going to help her, but you know, it was likely that that wasn't going to be mm -hmm. helping. I just wanted to use it as a demonstration. So the other thing I wanted to do was show you guys about various kinds of vitamins, why it's so important to take vitamins and minerals for our digestive system for our immune system, for our hormonal system, for all parts of our body, it's best to take supplements that are natural because our body understands nature. Not all of them, all those are natural, but not all of them were good for Kathy, right? So it's not like something's natural, oh, it's good for everybody. Not true, not true. There are certain things in nature that you don't want to eat, 
You know, like if you go out and you eat certain berries or certain mushrooms, they'll kill you. But they're natural. So that, uh, that, that the argument doesn't always fly, right? But I wanted to show about the difference between lab-made vitamins, sugar-laden vitamins, and just the general multivitamin that's from Standard Process, which is the natural one that has whole food in it. So I need another volunteer. Somebody come up quickly. All right, so let's try this on you. All right, so I've never muscle tested you before. No. In fact, I haven't seen you in 100 years. Okay, so <laughs> keep your elbows straight. I'm not that old. <laughs> no, I know. Actually, I saw it last year riding your bike. Push, push up. Okay, so you have a strong muscle, right? Do you right. feel that? Yeah. Okay, let's see if your body likes this. Hold this up against you and push up. Ooh, can you yeah. feel the difference? I think I can. That's okay, nice. push up again. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now, let's see if you even have a strong muscle. Push up. You even have a strong muscle. Okay. Right? Let's see if your body likes these sugary kid vitamins. Push. Even more. Oh, I can see that. Do okay. you feel the difference? Uh -huh. Push. Yeah. Okay. okay. And now, let's see if your body likes... The one that is, where did I just put it? <clears throat> oh, it's in there somewhere. That one. Okay. okay. Push up. That's the whole food one. Oh, interesting. See, and that makes you even stronger than you were before. Well, anyway. Right? <laughs> so push up. Good. See that? You're pretty strong, but push up. Okay, good. So let's do the demonstration about stomach and let's see if you need anything. Push. A little bit. You have a little bit of trouble. And then so we would say, you know, is this the one for you? Push up. See, for you, it's a different one. So mm -hmm. it's not always the same for each individual person, even though it's the same organ. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so do you guys see how that all works? Very good. Does anybody have any particular questions before we hand out the the um, thing? Yeah. <laughs> What's your question? Well, can I tell you what happened to me today? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Okay, hold on just a second. I think what we're going to do is sign off on Facebook. So we're gonna, <laughs> then we're going to go in and we can discuss whatever we want to. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs>